today is our Mayor Catherine Steele. So let's say good morning to the Mayor Catherine Steele, please. Good morning. <laughs> all right. So first, let me just say thank you all for being here. Let's give our students a big round of applause. These are the students of the month for the Edgewood Elementary School. Let's give them a big round of applause, you all. And I want to thank Ms. Teresa Gwynn. She is the Family Engagement Chair. Thank you uh, for this invitation. And thank you for all the work that you do on behalf of all of our students uh, at our elementary school. And so this morning, you're having a really healthy breakfast. And we want to thank the Hampton Inn for doing that. Let's give the Hampton Inn a big round of applause. And so to that end, I would like to um, provide a certificate of recognition to the Edgewood Elementary School. Oh. Would you please come up? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And this is a pre-K through fifth grade, right? Yes, ma'am. So who's our pre-K students? Raise your hand. Yay. First grade students, kindergarten students. Kindergarten. Uh, first graders. Second grade. Third grade. Fourth grade. And fifth grade. All right. Okay, so I just want to congratulate all of our winners, um, but I want you all to know that your success means a lot to our city of Baltimore because we believe that everything that you want to become, you can, but it is education first, and that's why we're so grateful to have a pre-K class here as well because the earlier we touch our young people, the greater their opportunities are for success. So let's give, again, this program a big round of applause. I'd also like the Hampton Inn Stadium to please come on up front. Come on, Mr. Dante. Thank you. We wanted to present you also uh, with our certificate of recognition, uh, the Hampton Inn for providing this healthy meal for our young people. Thank you. So thank you. You all get to touch them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the breakfast well. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you, so, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Corey. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And I think uh, Corey Cartwright. <laughs> Corey, you get a special recognition um, because you're the manager here. Yes. So. <laughs> so all of our young people were also provided with uh, certificates of recognition as well. And again, here's what we hope. We know that oftentimes our young people get distracted by negativity, but it is what we do for them at their earliest age that changes the trajectory of their lives. So as much as we can put our hands on them, parents, thank you so much for your engagement as well, and our teachers, thank you for being engaged, because we can create a better future for our young people. And you know, I think about the 42 recreation centers that we already have in the city, the additional recreation centers that we're building. We brought back in my last two years in the Senate of Maryland $1.2 billion to build new schools in the city of Baltimore. We will build 42 new, uh, 20, mm, 28 new schools in the city of Baltimore, more than in the entire state of Maryland. And then what we're also doing is creating community around those schools. For those of you who have not seen the work that we're doing up in Park Heights, for example, the new Pimlico Elementary and Middle School, where directly across the street were row houses that were boarded up. And so we, the city, invested in those row houses. And now those homes are going for 700 to 750 a month for mortgages, for people to live in the neighborhoods and communities. We want to do that in almost every single neighborhood in our city. We can make our city whole. I created what we call a in neighborhood investment fund. And the reason I created that neighborhood investment fund was to invest in neighborhoods and communities that have been underinvested in for decades. You all know we didn't create all the problems that the city is facing, but as the mayor of the city, I have the responsibility to, to grab hold of those problems and to provide solutions. And so we are encouraged every single day because we're going to turn boarded up houses into homes and parks and recreation facilities and opportunities for growth and economic development in our city. Again, if you've not ridden down, for example, <coughs> Park Heights and see the number of houses, 17 acres that we've torn down, boarded up houses in the 
city and are rebuilding in those neighborhoods and communities. If you've not seen what we've done across from the Dorothy Heights uh, Elementary School, where we've torn down uh, acres of land to rebuild neighborhoods and communities, we're doing it all over the city, you all. And that's why we, we as the carriers of the messages in our neighborhoods and communities have to get above the noise. I know that crime is a problem in the city. It was a problem before I became mayor, but it's certainly not one that I've turned my back on. You know, last year we had one of the highest crime rates in the country. And just a few weeks ago, you know, a young lady shot by, shot by a bullet. You know, thank God she's still living. But no child should have to endure that kind of pain, and no parent or teacher should have to sustain that kind of pain. So I know that we can do better, which is why we put forth laws to remove illegal guns from the streets of our city. But at the same time, making our communities safe and providing jobs and opportunities for people who live there, we now have mobile units moving around the city for people who want jobs. I tell folks, there's no reason to stand on the corner. Because if you want a job, you can get a job because the city has jobs. And then on top of that, those mobile units go out to neighborhoods, go out to two communities. They're in two different locations every single day. And now we put on those units lawyers to help people who need to get their records expunged. So we're doing our part and we will do more because it is our responsibility to do more. And so as I said before, one life lost in this city is one life too many. And while we're still trending downward, not at the level that I would like to see us trend, we're about 11% down in homicides, about 6% down in non-fatal shootings, about 27% down in burglaries, about 15% down in robberies, and about 9% down in aggravated assaults. That's trending downward, but it's not enough. And so even at, as we move toward the end of the year, we will read the names of all of the victims who have been victims of violence in this city. And that is to also pray for our city and our communities because these babies, these young people, deserve a city, a city that is going to open its arms up for success. The other good news is that we're becoming the cybersecurity city of the nation, of the East Coast. You know, we're building, uh, before the buildings even open, you know, there are 13 companies who've committed to being here in Baltimore because of the opportunities that are here. We've got drone camps for our young people inside of our rec centers. We're fixing pools that have been broken for decades, you know, because of a motor, uh, we shut down a pool as opposed to figuring out how to fix it. So we're making our community f pools free for our young people, uh, summer's going forward because all of our young people should learn how to swim. Also ice skate, you all go down to the Pandora ice skating rink. And again, uh, building new rec centers in Cherry Hill and just opened up one in Park Heights area, building a new library up there. So we want to continue to do the work, but we want these young people to feel like that they can continue to be in a city that's gonna be safe for them, that's gonna allow opportunities for them to grow, to flourish, and to be a part of the positive effects of the positive positivity of our city and the fabric of growth going forward. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you.